welcome friends to A Green Hill, a channel for sharing messages of hope and faith while discussing the gospel of Jesus Christ. We hope you enjoy today's content. Hello, this is Ben with A Green Hill. I'm here with a couple of my friends again, Mark, Chuck, and I. We love talking the gospel, so uh, we've been texting the last couple of weeks and we figured we better get back online. Um, <laughs> just had an awesome conference. Yeah, yeah. Nothing, nothing, to... nothing's, nothing's really going on right now, right? So everything's pretty <laughs> quiet. Uh, <laughs> all's quiet on the front. Uh, end of the world didn't happen on the solar eclipse, guys. I'm a little disappointed by that. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but <laughs> yeah, the so solar much going on. Eclipse was amazing. Um, Man, who shared the the quick uh, blurb of like, "Hey, if it's a if it points you to Christ, it's a sign of Christ," you know? Um, yeah, I, I I saw that tweet or X or whatever you call it. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. Anyways, a lot of awesome things are happening. Maybe we can kick this conversation off with a scripture. Uh, Mark, I'll pass it to you. This was a scripture from um, "Come Follow Me" uh, last week. And so, Mark, I'll pass it off to you, and then we can kind of jump into our conversation from there. Yeah, cool. Um, so just to, you know, reemphasize, and this isn't the topic that we're going to tackle today, but I thought it was super interesting because in during conference, in particular on social media, it was fascinating to see how many people, members of the church, uh, allegedly, active members of the church were taking words that the apostles and, and the general authorities and prophet were saying and twisting it just enough to fit their narrative. I saw a lot of that happening with Elder Kieran's talk in particular. Um, and it just made me think of this moment in Jacob chapter two. Um, and so Jacob, as we know, he's taken the people, he's preaching to them. And he's like, I wish I could tell you about good things and preach about good things and all the wonderful things that the gospel has to offer. Unfortunately, I can't do that. And he says in verse, this is why, um, basically he, cause there's a lot of fortifications going on. The Nephites, um, are essentially called more wicked than the Lamanites at this point in time, because, because of all these fornications. And he says right here in verse 23 and 24, why, or what the most egregious part of this was that led them to committing these fornications. And so in verse Jacob chapter two, verse 23, he says, but the word of God burdens me because of your grosser crimes for behold, thus saith the Lord, this people begin to wax in iniquity. They understand not the scriptures. For they seek to excuse themselves in committing whoredoms because of the things which were written in concerning David and Solomon, his son. Behold, David and Solomon truly had many wives and concubines, which was abominable before me, saith the Lord. And so I think it's really interesting that the Nephites were taking the scriptures and trying to utilize them to justify the bad choices that they're making, right? The sins that they were making. They were trying to fit scripture into their narrative. And I think that's incredibly, incredibly dangerous territory to start treading down. Because if we start going in that direction, we start to neglect what we're, we're looking beyond the mark, right? That's the, the scripture. We can, we can read that in Jacob chapter 4, uh, verse uh, 14. Um, so the, this is a warning that was given to the Jews. But behold, the Jews were a stiff-necked people, and they despised the words of plainness and killed the prophets, and sought for things that they could not understand. Wherefore, because of their blindness, which blindness came by looking beyond the mark, they must needs fall. This is the really interesting part. For God hath taken away his plainness from them, and delivered unto them many things which they cannot understand, because they desired it. And because they desired it, God hath done it, that they may stumble." So I just love that because it's the Jews. The reason the Jews stumbled is because they were looking for stuff or looking to shift things to fit their narrative, looking beyond the mark, which we know was Christ, right? They had completely removed Christ from, uh, from their traditions, from their laws. They, they knew a Messiah was coming, but they weren't tying it to Christ the way Nephi was trying to help us understand it needed to be. And because of that, God made it that they did stumble. Like he delivered unto them exactly what they were desiring. 
right? He was saying like, sure, if you want to make that scripture fit your narrative, go ahead. That's totally fine, but you're going to stumble. And because of that, it, it's it's not going to be good for you. So I just think it's a super cautionary tale um, for us as members just to make sure that we're not trying to look beyond the mark of what the brethren are saying. And I'm not saying we shouldn't be di- diving into the gospel because we absolutely should be. But trying to make, uh, trying to force fit what somebody's saying to justify the way that you see the world is not what the Lord has intended. That's not part of His, like we've talked about the uh, the bounds in which the Lord wants us to receive revelation. So, anyways, I just kind of wanted to hit on that a little bit. Um, but I don't know. I'm not sure what you guys think about that, but I I just have seen it just so much on social media since conference. It's pretty crazy. Same. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe a blatant example of this is, you know, we hear, we heard a lot about the importance of the garment and the protection that it is to us. And then you get um, tweets that are obviously tweaking that to, you know, things like, hey, we have um, free agency and choice. And so what that means is if a priesthood brother and asks you, are you wearing your garments? You can say, don't ask me about my underwear. So it's like you're just totally manipulating one part of the gospel to, you know, um, bypass another. And that's that's like nefarious, obviously. Um, But I think we can do that on accident um, by just how you that scripture uh, implies is that we we kind of focus more on what we want and not what the Lord wants. And so we insert like our opinion so much that, um, you know, it, it, it takes away from the true meaning and God will let you go down that road. If that's what you, you know, if that's what you're wanting and, and you want to interpret things that way, then, then it's like, he'll give it to you, um, to your, to your own stumbling. Right. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, you're right. And sometimes, um, we misinterpret things, not intentionally, not, you know, just, not everything in the gospel is spelled out for us in great detail. A lot of it uh, requires study and interpretation and trying to figure things out. And so we're not going to get it right every time. Uh, but I think that I think the thing we need to really avoid is not being perfect, you know, not trying to be perfect in our studies and everything, not being perfect in all our interpretation, but not trying to push our interpretations on other people, not trying to uh, preach our interpretation or our understanding as gospel truth. That's where we see um, problems. If you're getting on uh, the rooftop and saying uh, the apostle that gave this talk didn't mean that this is what he meant, or this is what, if you're trying to reinterpret things, maybe for yourself, okay, that's one thing. But if you're trying to do it for everybody else, that's, that's, where you get into some uh, hot water, right? Yeah. And I also saw that there's this, conversation happening about like oh the the brethren are really you know they're not unified they're really disjointed on some of these topics you could just tell by their talks that they're not all unified and i was like i felt like every single talk was spot on in alignment they were all rowing together you know so it's it's really interesting how people will see what they want to see and that's why for us we always um we love hearing voices and we will say this almost every time we get together because we feel super strongly about this is don't take anybody's don't take anybody's words at face value do your own research do what do what the effort and the work that you need to to receive your own inspiration and your own revelation and as long as that's within those bounds that we talked about it's in alignment with the doctrine of christ it's in alignment with the brethren it's in alignment with the 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 scriptures and the church guidelines like then then you're okay you're safe in those bounds it's when we start to get outside of those bounds that that there's real danger so anyways i just thought it would be important to just kind of reemphasize that at the beginning of this today because uh chuck you had a firsthand experience with this and a recent trip you just made yeah and we're gonna try not to look beyond the mark and and when we talk about this topic we're (laughs) we're trying not we don't want to be guilty of what we just talked about so we'll work on that but um yeah so I had a really good experience um, around the time of the eclipse just a few days ago. Uh, my wife and I took the kids and we went with some cousins and relatives. We went to Missouri to see the 
the eclipse in, in totality. And we spent a few days going around to all the church sites. We went to Adam on Diamond, which was an amazing, beautiful experience. Uh, Liberty Jail, a wonderful, wonderful learning experience and a spiritual experience. And we went to Independence, uh, you know, Jackson County, and all three of them were, were wonderful. Um, I was a little disheartened, though, in, in Independence because I – I really wanted to learn more about the New Jerusalem, right? The center place of the New Jerusalem. I wanted to know about um, Zion being built up in the last days. And, and I wanted to learn more about those things while being in that space, in that place, um, being in the center of the New Jerusalem. Um, but I found that the visitor center, as lovely as it is and as lovely as the people are that are working there, it never made mention of the New Jerusalem. So when I brought up the New Jerusalem, um, immediately, these wonderful senior missionaries immediately uh, kind of fired back and said, you know, we don't know where the New Jerusalem is going to be. We, there's no way to know. God hasn't revealed it. And, you know, they, they made it very clear. I talked to three different ones at different times, and they all gave me the exact same response. And I thought, this sounds very, very, very similar to some material that I've read and seen. Um, from certain individuals in the uh, kind of scholarly community, like they're they're kind of pushing this separate narrative that doesn't really align with what I believe and what I interpret the scriptures to to say. And I, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, and that's why I went to other missionaries in the visitor center, just like, hey, I've got a couple questions for you. I want to know more about the the New Jerusalem. I want to see your perspective. And every time it was, hey. Basically, the Lord changed his mind. He told Joseph uh, that it was going to be in Missouri. He told him, you know, all these things. But then when it didn't work out and the enemies pushed him out of Missouri, then the Lord said, ah, never mind. Don't worry about it. We'll, you know, forget Missouri. And in the little tours, I thought it was very interesting that they somewhat emphasized the fact that the visitor center is only there for historical purposes, not for future purposes. Uh, like, like independence doesn't have a place in our future, like in the last days and the millennium um, necessarily. They said, well, maybe, maybe the Lord will reveal that this is the place, the center place of the new Jerusalem, but maybe not. It could be anywhere. And it was, and then I tried to be very nice. We had very positive conversations and everything, but I said, you know, all due respect, I think that we're misinterpreting the doctrine of covenants, the revelations given to Joseph Smith about this place and they pulled out a laminated piece of paper that had uh, the same exact talking points that i had seen elsewhere just like a few days earlier um and they said hey somebody came here the church told us to say these things and and we'll we'll prove it to you we'll show you the email that that this gentleman sent us or that, you know this information they and they actually forwarded me the email and it turns out it was, a, it was a, a gentleman. I'm sure he's a great guy, but he's he's a, he teaches at BYU, but he was not in any sort of official capacity when he visited the Independence Visitor Center recently. He he came to make a YouTube video for a an independent group called Scripture Central, or in this case, in this case, uh, Doctrine and Covenant Central, um, which is you know more power to you if you want to make YouTube content to to help uh, people understand these things. That's, and that's what we're doing right here. Right. Um, so anyway, basically I walked away thinking, okay, so we're in the place of the new Jerusalem, as I understand it, yet they refuse to acknowledge that. And everybody I talked to was very, very quick to quote this guy and to say that it came from the church when it, in, in fact, it did not come from the church or any official source. It came from somebody who happens to work for the university. And we all love BYU. All, you know, we all went to BYU here. But it was like, okay, d is that, you know, like what's going on here? Can we just show up at a visitor center and tell them to rewrite their script and, and, and force, kind of push on them our own interpretation? Is that, is that what's happening here? And it appears that that's exactly what happened there. Um, so we want to go through some of those things. We want to go through the, the, the kind of the talking points that they got from this gentleman. We want to go through some other misconceptions about the New Jerusalem as we see them and, and kind of clear them up in ways that we see fit and just kind of help everybody 
and open up that dialogue. Yeah, it, oh, very, go ahead, Ben. Sorry. I was going to say, this is very interesting. I So I went to that same visitor center when I was in high school. And, man, I left with a totally different experience. Like, hey, this is a cornerstone of a temple that will be built here. And um, it's interesting that, you know, I, I could see if you just talked to one person and that was, you know, something that they came up with. But to get like that, it was a narrative that they had all basically been taught. And, and you know, they, you see a, a BYU professor put their stamp on it, and, and it feels like it's real. So, you know, on, on one side of the spectrum, it's like, hey, you're missing the vision of your, your mission. You're in a place that is absolutely incredible. Um, and on the other side, it's like, hey, we're fighting against Zion. So, you know, and I, I don't think any of these people are, are doing this nefariously. I, you know, they have some wonderful content. One, you know, I'm sure these missionaries are incredible. They're giving up their time and service. Um, it, it's, but these, uh, man, these narratives creeping in, I think it, it causes harm. It, what it does, we talked about this in our, last video is basically falling asleep on the idea of talking about Christ's return. And it makes it to where we don't, we don't have to worry about that. Um, it's not quite revealed yet again. Um, so it, it kind of makes us sleep on the subject of Christ's return. You know, and then one of the kind of the final word, they kind of tried to stop the conversation abruptly and that's, their prerogative fine but it was it was interesting I, and I, I was clear like hey i'm not trying to be difficult here i'm just trying to get i'm just trying to understand this um and we had we had some good moments in that that conversation but at the end of the conversation it was like look sometimes you just need to accept the answer that we don't know and the lord will tell us when he feels like telling us but there's no way of knowing until then and you know i was like okay understood but I think he's already told us, like, I think we already know these answers and uh, more will be revealed. And of course, but I think that we're, we're intentionally avoiding certain um, revelations uh, that could be very beneficial to people in their testimonies. Right. Yeah. And, and just to kind of add on to that, like, I think all three of us are super happy to admit we're wrong if we are presented with more information than we have. Right. Cause once again, we're just three dads, yeah. just, we love to study the gospel and could the new Jerusalem be declared in a new location? Absolutely. I guess it could be if it, the Lord can, can say whatever he wants about it. But I think there is a lot of, uh, I, I think what we're, we're doing, especially in the church is we're molding two things together. We're, we're molding Zion together and we're molding new Jerusalem and they're not one in the same. They are two different things. And, and I think that's where some of the confusion comes in. And in addition to kind of what you're talking about, um, Ben, with just the narrative and stuff like that, I would love, we've got to figure out how to bring Hannah Stoddard on here at some point in time with the Joseph Smith Foundation, because she has, her, her group has done so much research on how there have been people who have tried to change the narrative of the church. And the whole intention of that is to cast doubt on the prophet Joseph. So this is another great example, I think, to that, and I think this is why this matters, is if we can cast a little doubt on, well, Joseph wasn't right about this, then you can start to say, well, then Joseph might not have been right about other things, too, and then that can spiral quickly into, well, then he probably wasn't a prophet, if that's the case. So this is one of those things I think is a very, I think it's a very minor thing in as far as like a narrative like the importance of that narrative, but I think it is uh, downstream incredibly, incredibly impactful uh, if if we go that direction. So that that's why when Chuck when Chuck was texting like in lifetime, you, you were you were texting <laughs> Ben and I as you're having these discussions, and I was I have to admit I had probably not the greatest emotional response to that because similarly. I went to uh, the church history tour um, right after my mission, 
and I was the same. I was like, oh my gosh, what are we talking about? Like, yeah, New Jerusalem is is here. These are the cornerstones of the temple that were dedicated for the New Jerusalem temple. We know this. Uh, we've been taught this our entire lives. Uh, I even asked my wife who like, she, she just is um, trying to figure, so, you know, she's doing her own study and stuff. And I just asked her like, hey, where's the New Jerusalem going to be? And she's like, oh, it's going to be in Missouri. I was like, yes. Like everybody up until this point has been taught that the new Jerusalem is going to be in Jackson County, Missouri. So I think it's really important that we tackle this because downstream, I think it can have a major impact. Yeah. I think we need to look at the scriptures when, 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 with all this and the words of the prophets, of course. Um, now you mentioned uh, Mark Zion and the new Jerusalem. Um, one, the, the very first kind of response I got was, um, well, one of the very first ones was, well, Zion is in our hearts. It's over the whole globe. It's, you know, I go, yeah, well, okay. I'm not talking about like the broader sense of the term. I'm not talking about the New Jerusalem being confined to a, a, a small geography of like a county. I'm saying I'm, I'm talking about the center place. The the Doctrine and Covenants uses that term, the center place of Zion, or the center place of the New Jerusalem. Uh, you know, the city of the New Jerusalem. So when we talk about also the discussion, go ahead. Sorry, that that was also stated by Brigham Young, Wilford Woodruff, uh, Joseph F. Smith. Uh, uh, President Benson similarly called it the New Jerusalem, the center stake of Zion, right? That is going to yeah. be the central location. Yeah, and they, and they, in these many discussions I had, they, they emphasize like, oh, well, we have wonderful members all over the world. Yeah, of course, absolutely. We have stakes that really kind of dot the earth. I mean, literally dot the earth. And that's a wonderful, wonderful principle. Um, so t we don't, we don't want to, you know, confuse anybody with this when we re we refer to the New Jerusalem uh, or Zion. We don't want to, you know, just to make it clear. Um, yeah, great members. A lot of them are kind of hunkered down in the last days where they are in the stakes of Zion. But one of the misconceptions as well that we'll get to, I'm sure, is that a lot of people are saying, oh, well, just a few people will go to wherever the New Jerusalem is and they'll, you know, do their thing. But the rest of us are just, you know, we'll just hang out wherever we are. Um, the scriptures tell something a little bit differently, and we'll, we'll get to that. But, um, you know, and uh, my wife said, my wife kind of asked me if I had baited these missionaries. Like, did you do this, like, intentionally? Or I know you might try to push some buttons and get some dialogue going. Did you do that? It seemed like you might have been trying to push the buttons. And like, no, no, for the record, um, I went in there just like, so happy to get some more information. I wanted to be fed, you know, I wanted them to feed me. And then immediately it was like, you know, you said the word, the term New Jerusalem, boom, you know, we're going to shut that down immediately. And it was like, hey, take this, laminate a piece of paper, tap, 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 read that. There's your answer, done. Uh, and it was, there wasn't a lot of room for discussion. And I'm like, okay, is this how we're going about it? And, um, you know, and, like he said, it's not the people's fault. It's not like the missionaries' fault. I mean, they probably have you know dozens of missionaries that go through these, you know, that rotate through these church sites. They're all wonderful people. They're doing what they're told. In fact, we're going to get to it, but they sent me that email, like we mentioned, and it said, hey, check out this historian guy. He made a video about it. Watch the video. And um, if you have any more questions, go to doctrineandcovenantcentral.com. And so I thought, okay, so now, you know, and these people thought this was like church. They thought this was like official sources. And they said, this came from the church. So we're going to go with it. And, and I'm like, okay, I don't want to be too argumentative. I'm like already feeling too argumentative. And my wife's over there rolling her eyes. You know, my kids are running around. I don't wanna, <laughs> like, you know, so I don't want to be difficult. But at the same time, I'm going, I, I think you're mistaken here. Like that, that group of people is very diligent, but they're, they've got, they're controversial. Let's just say that. Like they, they, to say the least, they're very controversial in the way that they go about their their fact finding and their their statements and their everything. And they do a lot of great work, like we said. But um, anyway, I mean, so do do the three of us now go to the various visitor centers and just like present them with our interpretations of things, but not tell them that it's our our view. It's just like here's the truth. Here's what you need to teach. New script, yeah, new everything. So, I don't know. I mean, we're not Chuck, do that, as you're right? texting, but it's, but it's happening. Right. And as you're texting, like, I literally, it took me 30 seconds 
I hopped on to, to the citation index that is amazing. If nobody, if you don't know about the citation index, you can get the app on your phone. Just just Google or just search for uh, BYU citation index. It'll come up. It's called the Scripture Citation Index. So BYU has uh, been doing work for years on accumulating every talk by every general authority, especially the, the apostles and prophets since, since mm -hmm. Joseph Smith. And they've made it into this incredibly amazing searchable index, which you can do by scripture verse even, like which apostles talked about that verse in their talk, and you can search that way, or you can do it by um, just, you know, just by a, a keyword. So I just typed in New Jerusalem, and within 30 seconds, I had 94 talks just at my disposal. And mm -hmm. I just start screenshotting. How many, I don't even know how many I screenshot you guys, but I felt bad after a <laughs> while because I'm like, I'm, I'm Chuck's trying to have this conversation. Here I am blowing up his phone. But just quote after quote after quote after quote of the brethren saying like, no, this this is the New Jerusalem. Jackson County is is where we will return uh, to what to will return there when the Lord is ready, you know, for the for the millennium and for the second coming and all this stuff. And and it's just fascinating to me, like just just taking taking somebody's word. And this is why we're like, guys, don't listen to us. Go do your own research. Go do your own thing. Because it took me literally 30 seconds to counter argue everything that Chuck was texting us at that point in time. And it just was like, guys, like, why are we not doing our, why are we taking somebody's, especially a non-official church, uh, a church voice, and we're taking it at face value. It's, it was incredibly interesting to me. And I'm sorry that you probably have high data charges because of me from that day. <laughs> Not a problem. So, um, yeah, just to like, so we're square on definitions. Zion, you know, it's English language, guys. We understand that it could mean more than one thing. Uh, Bruce R. McConkie explained it as like right now, the phase of the church is to build Zion in the stakes where we live. But soon, Zion will be going to the new Jerusalem. And man, it was so obvious that that is in Jackson County, Missouri with the literally within three minutes, like Mark was saying, it was just, we found so many quotes from the brethren, um, from apostles saying, yeah, that we're gonna return there. The saints left there knowing that one day, you know, the people will return here. Um, it was prophesied that they'll return from the West. Um, so yeah, definitions, Zion, totally understand that right now it could mean the pure in heart, build your stake in design. Uh, however, God will build up a central Zion. Um, that is another definition of Zion. And then I just think of that mission, man, I would, I would love to be in that mission and feel the power of that place. I just feel I feel sad for them that they're missing out on, man, the, the true beauty of of what that mission really is and could be. Yeah. 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 So Zion, the pe Zion, the people and Zion, the place. Right. So that's that's one of the things I think is super important. We are supposed to become a Zion people. We're supposed to build up our stakes of Zion. Absolutely. But just because there is one meaning to that does not discredit the fact that, that there is a Zion, the location, the place, the place where the Savior will set up headquarters and will be doing the work, right? And so I, I just, I love that you kind of made that that uh, clarification, Ben, because I think just so many times we, um, if we, if we're not making it crystal clear, the Lord does use the word Zion to define both of those things at different times. So we just need to be super careful that we're not assuming that because somebody says Zion, the people that that means like, Oh, well, there's not any specific location. It's just anybody anywhere is going to be in Zion. And that's not what the Lord has taught in the doctrine covenants. Yeah. And if you go to, uh, let me find it in Moses, the book of Moses, um, it's, it, it talks about, um, that a little bit that that we will go out to the world and bring people unto the land of zion so um well uh before we go any further i did want to cover what they presented to me in that laminated piece of paper and i wanted to kind of establish their the theory that they're kind of um teaching 
to the to the visitors and then kind of dissect that a little bit because we interpret it one way and they clearly uh, at least this gentleman from BYU uh, interprets it a different way. So if you go to DNC 124-49, uh, um, that was what was printed on the top of this paper in large type. Uh, let's see, what does it say? Um, so a little backstory. Uh, the church started in, in upstate New York, Palmyra, right? Um, you've got uh, Kirtland, Ohio, and you've got... Uh, the saints then are commanded by the Lord to go to the, the to the west, to the western border of Missouri, um, to the border of the Lamanites, right? Uh, which I thought was interesting because they quoted that scripture in the in the one of the parts of the tour, but they didn't say Lamanite. They misquoted the Lord. They put in um, Indian, which that was my first indication that they're kind of probably influenced by the more progressive, we call them the progressive historians, right? The church historians, um, official or unofficial, they kind of have this progressive narrative. Like, oh, okay. I see where some of this stuff is coming from. Uh, they don't want to say the word Lamanite because and that's a whole other video that we can do about geography and, and such. But anyway, the Lord tells them to go to, to Missouri. Uh, things don't go super well in Missouri and the enemies, we know, push them out. Extermination order, all that stuff. And they end up going to Nauvoo, where they were able to build the Temple of Nauvoo, and then eventually end up in Salt Lake City. Um, but what happened? This is the this is the what they kind of consider to be the silver bullet, and the interpretation, like I said, is different than our Which interpretation. Is, so, just to make it clear, from my understanding, there is no such thing as a singular silver bullet to anything in the Gospel of Jesus Christ. One verse does not doctrine make. And so I think it's super important to remember that it's really, really hard to take a single verse and say, oh, this is this is what the Lord meant by that. When there's a hundred quotes and other scriptural references that completely counter what that singular verse says. So I just right. I just I, I'm a super cautious of a silver bullet scripture that counters everything else right right and, and i am even i may be mistaken about the silver bullet thing i just kind of that's what it seems like to me that they're using that as like hey read this and argument over and this is uh the uh the lord speaking in doctrine and covenants 124 49 verily verily i say unto you that when i give a commandment to any of the sons of men to do a work unto my name and those sons of men go with all their might and with all they have to perform that work and cease not their diligence and their enemies come upon them and hinder them from performing that work. Behold, it behooveth me to require that work no more at the hands of those sons of men, but to accept, uh, but to accept of their offerings. So they, they focus on the part that says it behooveth me to, to require that work no more. And I, and I said, okay, but if you keep reading, it talks about those sons of men. I think I, to me, it seems like it's specifically talking about um, those people at that time, that, that the, the, all the revelations that point to the New Jerusalem, because the New Jerusalem is very future tense, right? It's like, it has not been built up. You are to build it up. It will be built up. Doctor, it's, it's very clear that that's like future tense. And and here they're saying, oh, oh well, the, the, the Lord pulled the plug on that. This verse says the Lord changed his mind. No more Missouri. Move on. Don't look back. Yeah, because ver verse 51 says, right, therefore, for this cause, have I accepted the offerings of those whom I commanded to build up a city and a house into my name in Jackson County, Missouri. So he is specifically talking about those people. So just because he accepted that offering doesn't discredit the fact that that is the location that the Lord chose for yeah. the New Jerusalem, as stated in Dr. Covenant 84. The reason, one reason this is super important is because, man, this is what ex-Mormons and antis use all the time is that, oh, Joseph's prophecies, they don't come true. Mm -hmm. Oh, it, it didn't happen that way, so you can just change it. And the Lord's going to make it happen this way. Exact. I mean, this wasn't just prophesied then. Christ prophesied this in the Book of Mormon. Um, so in that email that Chuck got, they, they gave the link to this 
18 minute video um, that you know they're they're really taking as authority. And there were a few things in there that caught my eye right away in the video. He says he talks about the New Jerusalem that it was prophesied in the Book of Mormon, which is awesome. You know, he, he says, hey, in 3 Nephi 21, it was prophesied in the Book of Mormon that it would be built in the Americas. And I was like, wait, no, it wasn't prophesied to be built in the Americas. It was prophesied to be built in this land. This land. So, yeah. So, you know, in, in Third Nephi, if we go to Third Nephi 21, I'll just read a few things. Um, he's talking right from the beginning in, in verse 1. It said, um, O house of Israel, um, and shall establish a, again among them my Zion. Okay, so he's he's saying my Zion. This is that second definition that we're talking about that is like central Zion. Um, in verse 4, he this is Christ speaking. He says, For it is wisdom in the Father that they should be established in this land and be set up set up as a free people by the power of the Father, that these things might come forth from them unto a remnant of your seed, that the covenant of the Father may be fulfilled, which he hath covenanted with his people, O house of Israel. So in there, it, it talks about a remnant of your seed. He's talking to the, the Lamanites and Nephites here, and he, he said established in this land. Um Later, in verses 23 through 25, um, maybe I'll start with 22, he says, But if they will repent and hearken unto my words and harden not their hearts, I will establish my church among them. Uh, we know where the church was established. Uh, and they shall come in unto the covenant and be numbered among the remnant of Jacob, unto whom I have given this land for their inheritance. So he's he's talking about the Gentiles can, can assist in this work on this land. Um, and they shall assist my people, the remnant of Jacob, and also as many of the house of Israel shall as shall come, that they may build a city which shall be called the new Jerusalem. And then shall they assist my people that they may be gathered in who are scattered upon all the face of the land in unto the new Jerusalem. And then shall the power of heaven come down among them, and I will be in the midst. So, you know, just remember a few things that he said throughout here, that a new Jerusalem will be established. Christ is saying this. It's reset in the, the DNC several times. Um and so that that was the first part that kind of caught my eyes like hey he's not just saying the americas here he's saying this land so we kind of got to establish this land a little bit later in that same video he shared um dnc 289 and he and uh maybe someone could read that and then i'll i'll kind of quote what he said about that 289 you got that mark let me get it if you don't. Okay. Oh, yeah. me... We're doing, we're pull... yeah, go ahead. We're playing, we're playing uh, scripture D speed. DNC 28, uh, nine, right? Right. And now behold, I say unto you that it is not revealed and no man knoweth where the city of Zion, I'm sorry, the city Zion shall be built, but it shall be given hereafter. Behold, I say unto you that it shall be on the borders by the Lamanites. Okay, so it says on the borders by the Lamanites, right after sharing that scripture. So he's going to establish, you know, a couple cool scriptures that, hey, you know, Christ is revealing a Zion, a, a new Jerusalem. Um, he says it's going to be by the borders of the Lamanites. And then really quick, he adds, the word Lamanites was a broad term the early saints used to refer to American Indians. Now, this is not a broad term that the saints are using. This is a revelation from Christ. This is a word that Christ is using. He knows who the Lamanites are. He doesn't need to use broad terms. He knows exactly what language he wants to reveal to Joseph Smith to put in the Doctrine and Covenants. Um, 
Well, it isn't isn't that the same language that was used in Oliver Cowdery's mission call? He was served to go serve um, to go preach to the Lamanites on the border yeah, of the Lamanites. Four missionaries, the yeah. Exact, yeah, I think it's the exact same uh, terminology that they're using. And where did they go? They went to Missouri. That's where they they started to serve. Yeah. So then another scripture, awesome scripture that they shared in this video was DNC 50, 57 3, basically where the Lord is established in the independence is the place. Um, so I thought awesome. They're they're sharing that. Um and then I mean we could read DNC 57 3 if you want. It's a great scripture. You do you have that, Mark? I've got it if you want. I had I, I got it too. Oh, well, then you go, Mark. You can do it. It's your turn. Be, I, I beat you. <laughs> uh, and let's say it the Lord your God, if is that the right one? 57 3. And let's say it the yeah. Lord your God, if you will receive wisdom, there is wisdom. Behold, the place which is now called independence is the center place, and a spot for the temple is lying westward upon a lot which is not far from the courthouse. So just remember back what we read. Third Nephi 21, where Christ is talking to him and saying, hey, on this land, there's going to be established a new Jerusalem. And then in DNC 57, he's saying it is in Independence, Missouri. So unless the Lord's like playing games and just saying, oh, it's here. Nope, just kidding. It's not like this wasn't something that was established and then revoked. This is something that's been established forever. And just because a, a people didn't succeed at it doesn't mean that it's taken away. Um, you know, how Chuck explained that verse 49 in DNC 124, those people, for those people, I mean, he says it several times. It's really important to. Let's know, let's to, let's remember to, that the Lord doesn't command them to go to the New Jerusalem in Nauvoo or salt lake city the new jerusalem has been always specific to to missouri and, and ben if you don't mind in 57 I, i'd like to read verse 5 at least at the end of it um he says behold this is wisdom that they may obtain it for an everlasting inheritance i love the word everlasting that 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 supports these other parts of the uh, the revelation right that it's it's not a temporary it's not a well if you try and it didn't work out then we'll just you know, scratch that, you know, mulligan, go somewhere else, New Jerusalem. Well, we'll find it eventually. Like, it's it's everlasting. It's been predetermined, right? Been pre-established. All right. So, I'm sorry, just just as Jerusalem has been established, right? Yeah. Just, just, as, just as Jerusalem is the holy land, right? That is the holy land, the original promised land, holy land. So New Jerusalem is is the spot. That is the place. That's why the first will be last and the last will be first, right? That's there, there's a lot of that that's talked about in the signs of the times. Um, that the stuff's gonna happen in New Jerusalem first, and then it's going to end in old Jerusalem. So that that to that's we just gotta be super careful to be like to make sure that we're not saying like well, when we're talking about the real Jerusalem, that's a specific location, but not the new Jerusalem. That's more of this vague general concept. Yeah, I mean, for me, the prophecies are just obvious that there will be, you know, two capitals, uh, one where the word will go forth, one where the law will go forth. The new Jerusalem and Jerusalem will be those two capitals. Um, so, so why is this important? Well, one thing that he shared in that video after, you know, reading that DNC 12449, um, he said, quote, what that means is that the Lord requires that work no more. That's the current final word of the Lord on that topic. Now, if we if he ever wants to command his saints to go ahead and build it again, then he can go ahead and do so. So basically what he's saying is like, we have to wait for more revelation to know that uh, there will be a new Jerusalem. We have to wait for more revelation to know that um, we're going to be required to gather to Zion, the only place of safety where Man, what is it? DNC 
three or something that basically like, hey, if you don't want to take up arms against your yeah. brethren, you're going to have to flee to the New Jerusalem. DNC um, 45. Yeah. Yeah. So what it does is it, it takes well, away all urgency of the second coming. We don't it it's not here yet because it's you know these revelations have been taken away and if the lord wants to reveal it again he can do so but for right now we're in a holding period and we're going to wait and if that's what we want to do we will wait here in salt lake or wherever we want is you know lord will let you do what you want to do right yeah and and i think it's 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 critical to kind of keep in mind too that um if that is the final word, then every apostle and prophet after that who has talked about Jackson County being the New Jerusalem and that we will go back there, then then I guess their their voices are null and void. Because if that's the final word of the Lord, then why do they t keep referencing it years and years and years later? I mean, the most recent reference was in the mid 70s by President Benson. Um, where he literally says, no, we will go back to Jackson County and we will, we will establish the new Jerusalem. Now I, I it's been 30 ish years, 40 ish years now since it's been talked about, but I think there's reason for that. And I have theories as to why, why it hasn't been announced over the pulpit. Um, but yeah, I, and we can talk about that later, but that's to, to say that that is the final word of the Lord on this matter, then Brigham Young, Wilford Woodruff, Lorenzo Snow, President Benson, um, uh, I can't remember all the other ones I sent you. Uh, but there was a whole bunch. Orson, President or, Nelson. President Orson Nelson Pratt. Was, president Nelson also. Uh, it was to BYU audience years ago before he was president of the church. Said by name, Jackson County, that we will return. Yeah. So, so that's why I can't. I can't take that scripture as being the final word of the Lord, because if it was the final word of the Lord then it wouldn't be talked about over and over again in subsequent years by prophets and apostles, because now, now you're suggesting that they weren't prophets and apostles because that was the final word of the Lord and they keep bringing it up. And Mark, I can even take it as the final word of the Lord, because if you just interpret it correctly, it makes perfect sense. Like he doesn't require those saints of, you know, the early 1800s that um, didn't succeed. Uh, they didn't succeed for several reasons, um, not to mention the persecution, but also themselves going in haste without how, you know, Joseph Smith directed them to go. There were several things that happened to where, look, they weren't going to redeem Zion. Um, so they, they gave it a good effort. The Lord thanked them for it. And they says those men, those men several times are not going to be required to do it again. He didn't say that he will not require others to do it. In DNC 101, he talks about he will require his um, his young warriors and middle age to go and, and redeem Zion. And that, um, you know, there will be required some to tarry, you know, to help while those go and, and redeem it so that we can go back there and, and have peace and ultimately be with the Lord. Yeah, and, you know, and doctor, yeah, we won't re we won't read all these verses here, but go study Doctrine and Covenants verses one through five. I mean, it makes it very crystal clear that at this location is where the city of the New Jerusalem will be built and expanded from from there. You know, there's a thing that happens. Ahead, uh, for some reason, people think that if, if something's not explicitly mentioned over the pulpit in conference recently that it's kind of null and void. Like, uh, it was probably a mistake if it happened in 1965 for our parents' generation, but they haven't mentioned it since. Uh, you know, it's like, it's like saying, oh, I, I'm going to go get multiple, I'm going to practice plural marriage because they haven't told us not to in a while. So I'm just going to disregard the scriptures and, and the words of the prophets because that was a long time ago. Uh, you know, it's, it's odd to me that we have this kind of mentality sometimes as church members that um, that things like there's this like expiration date on doctrine when really is there? I mean, is there ever an expiration date? Now, there were different 
ways that we are to practice certain things and that comes through revelation through the prophet and everything. but i mean if the if the brethren never uh mention uh over the pulpit uh for for 20 years that we should pay our tithing do we stop paying our tithing like this is this is kind of the mentality of it like oh well Joseph Smith, and one thing that they say in that video and, and elsewhere, and they told me this at the visitor center, is that Joseph Smith stopped talking about it when he got to Nauvoo. He stopped talking about Missouri as the New Jerusalem. Uh, you know, and did he? I mean, perhaps if you look at everything we do have that he said, maybe he didn't mention it ever again. Maybe, maybe that's true. Uh, he might have mentioned it, but we don't have the record of that. I don't know. He was also trying not to be killed at the same time. He was trying to build up um, Nauvoo. There were a lot of things that were going on. Um, that's that's not indicative of uh, the Lord pulling the plug on that doctrine, right? Well, Joseph Smith didn't really talk about Missouri ever again. Okay. And then and then one other thing that was mentioned three different times at the visitor center, and, and trust me, go to the visitor center and, and we'll have a wonderful time. You'll love the exhibits. You'll love the tours. It's really wonderful. Um, I don't want to I don't want to speak negatively about any of that experience. Um, we're just trying to kind of tackle an issue that did arise. Um, but one thing that they three different people quoted and it was on that laminate paper was um, the article of faith number 10. And they said that uh, the city uh, that Zion, the new Jerusalem, will be built on the American continent. And they and they said to me, if Joseph knew where that would be, he would have included that into that article of faith. And so then we're going, hey, that's pretty assumptive, right? Now we're making an assumption. Now we're saying that Joseph Smith would have done X, Y, and Z if he had known. And I go, well, okay, so all of those, all of those articles of faith are are very kind of basic summaries of of the different beliefs that we that we hold. Um, so the argument of, well, he only said the American continent. That equals anywhere in North or South America or all over both and or somewhere else. It doesn't matter. It could be nowhere. It could be everywhere. It could be somewhere. It could be here, there and anywhere in between because he didn't specify and he didn't specify because he did not know. That's a lot of assumptions happening right there. Uh, and so uh, I think we need to and, and we're guilty of it. I mean, the three of us, everybody, probably everybody on planet Earth is guilty of, of making assumptions or trying to connect dots that don't connect or or, you know, make connections that just don't aren't there um but i don't know it's it's my experience and you guys probably have the same experience that when i search deep into the scriptures i'm finding new jerusalem uh doctrine in the bible in the book of mormon in the pearl gate price in the doctrine of covenants and then i'm finding it um throughout like talks given by the general authorities and with all that information put together it's my conclusion that Jackson County is still the, the place for the New Jerusalem, for the center place of the New Jerusalem. Now, one uh, thing that I want to go ahead, go ahead. Oh, sorry. So just just add in a couple of things if I can. So Elder Bednar kind of basically destroyed that whole um, thought process of if we haven't talked about it for a while, then you don't need to worry about it anymore. When he did the food storage talk a couple of years ago, remember that? Yeah. He's All like, right. just because we haven't talked about it doesn't mean we shouldn't still be doing it. Right. Um, then the other thing too, and this was something I discovered in my study. So I, I also have, um, the 1828 Webster's dictionary app on my phone, because that was the language Joseph knew. And the word continent back then means something very different than what it means to us today. Right. So just can I read this real quick? Cause I think it's interesting. It says in geography, a great extent of land, not disjoined or interrupted by a sea, a connected tract of land of great extent as the eastern and western continent. It differs from an isle only in extent. New Holland may be denominated a continent. Britain is called a continent as opposed to the Isle of Ang Anglesey. Um, so it's basically saying back then Britain was considered a continent because it was a continual strip of land. Right. So Joseph, I, I'm not certain of this, but I don't think he had a very intense knowledge of world geography at that point in time. Maybe he did, but I have a really hard time thinking that he was referring to the entire continent in its entirety. Um, I think he was talking about America at the time uh, and that continent. Now that's, that's assumptive on my part, Chuck. I just did exactly <laughs> what you told me not to do. But that we just we just have to be careful too, understanding that language that Joseph used 
didn't have the same meaning as language that we use. Because for us now, continent is pretty crystal clear. We kind of have a good idea of what that means, but it's not the same meaning and context to the people of that day. So um, I'll just end with a couple of quotes that I like. One is Heber C. Kimball. He talks about us being in the, these mountains, uh, that we need not be disheartened for we shall stay here and all hell cannot help it. We have done as they told us until we got into the mountains. And here we will do the will of our Father in heaven, he helping us. Let us prepare ourselves that when we go to Jackson County, we shall know how to do right and make beautiful gardens. And then Joseph Smith himself said, you will re recollect, I'm uh, sorry, you will recollect that the Lord has said, that Zion should not be removed out of her place. Therefore, the land should not be sold, but be held by the saints until the Lord in his wisdom shall open a way for your return. And until that time, if you can purchase attractive land in Clay County for present emergencies, it is right. You should do so if you can do it and not sell your land in Jackson County. Um, there's a righteous principle that, that that land has been purchased and it it um, it was taken from the saints and from the Lord. So it's already rightfully theirs. Um, that's that's also in, in DNC 101, the parable of the noble man and the olive tree. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's just so obvious. Crazy that such a narrative has <laughs> crept in. You know, um, uh, we're going to hear a lot more, I think, going into the future. People uh, kind of claiming that any mention of Missouri is like a conspiracy theory or it's some sort of wacky, like my my crazy uncle uh, it wants to move to Missouri kind of thing uh, to be close to the events of the second coming. Where it Within the church, I've seen so many people uh, claim that any, any sort of... Uh, any sort of preparation that that points anybody to Missouri is is crazy wackadoodle. You shouldn't do that. I would venture to say that, I mean, there may be a day that comes where we are given very specific just instructions and we're going to um, follow those instructions and, and make our way over there. Um, but until then, and, and you know, if, if you yourself and your family uh, are close to uh, the spirit, close to your heavenly father, you receive personal revelation for that kind of thing and you feel like you know something in your preparation for the second coming needs to involve missouri hey don't let people talk you out of it don't let people uh you know trash you we're not saying go buy land in missouri we're not saying that we're at that point we're not saying that collectively we need to all start you know hitching up our wagons and making our way to missouri we're not saying that at all but hey if by all means if that's something that is right for your family, uh, you know, next year, five years from now, whenever, go for it. Know the doctrine, though. Know what the scriptures say. Know, have a really good understanding when it comes to those things. Um, and um, just remember that, like, the scriptures are very clear that, that um, the ways of the Lord, look at the parable of the wheat and the tares, the ways of the Lord are going to be mocked, and they're going to be mocked by members of the church you're going to hear a lot of people um criticizing your understanding of of the scriptures and your understanding of the second coming and and that's what our last video was about and it's an unfortunate thing but it's just it's already happening it's going to continue to happen so i would encourage everybody to to look towards zion and however that fits into your future plans maybe you don't know that right now because i don't know right now how that fits into my to my plans um, but i'm not ruling anything out you know the day may come where my wife and i look at each other and go okay we're gonna have to do x y and z and missouri is part of that plan yeah um and uh i think we, well we, we've heard we've heard the church has purchased a ton of land in missouri we we know this we know that missouri is an important place adam on diamond is mm -hmm. in missouri that's where adam is going to come down and direct some of the work is from adam on diamond so it's, uh, I think it's, it's just interesting that this, of all the things, this is one of the ones that 
we seem to be trying to to push in a in a certain direction. And and I have I I, I believe that one of the reasons why the church doesn't talk about it so much these days is because with technology, I mean, can you imagine like if the brethren were talking about like, Hey, we're going to be taking back Jackson County, Missouri, we're going to be taking back what, what is that going to do? That's going to create the same panic, the same resistance that was always, you know, was there the first time around. And I think, I think that's part of the reason we haven't heard about it, but uh, I just, I just want to share one last, one last quote um, that I think, is pretty crystal clear. And this is from President Benson. Um, so in addition, like I was scrolling through all the ones I sent you, I was like, do I use the Joseph F. Smith one? Do I use Heber C. Kimball? Do I use Lorenzo? So like, whose do I use? So I decided to use, I decided to use one of the more recent ones I could find. So this was from a talk, I believe it's called Our Constitution from Ezra Taft Benson. And it was in the seventies. I, I wanna say it was 76, but I might be wrong. And he says, the Lord has also decreed that this land, using your terminology, Ben, this land should be the place of the new Jerusalem, which should come down out of heaven, the holy sanctuary of the Lord, quoting Ether 13, three there. Here is our nation's destiny, our nation's destiny. That's what he says, to serve God's eternal purposes and to prepare this land and people for America's eventual destiny. The Lord established the constitution of this land by the hands of wise men whom he raised up to this very purpose. So he's saying that the whole reason that this country was established with the Constitution and the freedoms in this country was to establish the New Jerusalem in Jackson County, Missouri. I don't think he can be much more clear than that. I love it. Well, if we go in about an hour, so let's let's wrap things up. I'd say we'd go a quick roundtable and say, hey, if there's one lesson or you know a couple of huge takeaways from this what would it be for you um maybe chuck can start us out yeah i would say uh, be discerning you know you're gonna see and I, and I think we mentioned this in the last videos like if, if really discernment is, is key right now personal revelation seek understanding seek the spirit when you're when you're trying to uh, figure these things out it's a jigsaw puzzle and the pieces don't always go together the way you think they're going to go together. Um, so uh, keep at it. You're not going to get the, the puzzle completed uh, overnight. Now, the Lord will help you. The Spirit will help you. Our Heavenly Father wants us to know the truth. He's not trying to hide uh, a bunch of wisdom from us. He wants us to, to seek out those mysteries and, 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 and receive those answers. And so and that, that absolutely applies to the, the, the subject matter in this video and, and, and basically the whole gospel. Church is true. I'm, I'm so grateful for it because it gives us such a, a, a guiding light in life. It gives us so many, um, it, so much assistance, and when we're trying to navigate through this crazy world, and uh, the scriptures um, are are the guide, you know, and the, and the spirit. Let the spirit be your guide. Let the scripture be your guide. We have a living prophet, um, and and lastly, Joseph Smith is is the prophet of this dispensation. Uh, you will see, we will all see more and more effort, even from church members, active church members, to de-emphasize the prophet Joseph Smith, to, to say that he wasn't as important as we, we might think. He is as important as we might think, and some. He's very important. His work is important. And um, let's remember um, that the Lord called him to do this great work. And uh, he's still got more to come, right? He's gonna be he's gonna be there at Adam on Diamond, and we're gonna be right there, uh, you know, side by side with Joseph Smith in the millennium. Um, do not uh, underestimate the the value of Joseph Smith. Yeah, I love that. I think um, I think uh, kind of what Chuck's saying, like uh, you know, the reason the reason that Oliver Cowdery struggled to translate is because he he uh didn't understand revelation right he didn't understand that revelation is it comes in your heart and in your mind and the two need to work together so for me anytime there's a little bit of dissonance there i'm like okay i need to really look into that and figure out why why am i feeling the way i'm feeling about this particular topic and usually it's because it might make sense but it doesn't feel right or it feels right but it doesn't make sense and so I try to find that perfect harmony of the two. So I don't love the answer of like, well, we don't need to know everything. I'm like, okay, well, that's true. We don't need to know everything, but he has commanded us to learn as much as we possibly can. 
And so when, when something that has been core to us and our church and our doctrine since the restoration started in, in, in Joseph Smith's time, if, if that has been talked about and that is what the narrative has been, and then out of nowhere comes this new thought process that starts to become the norm, that's one of those things that causes dissonance in me. And that's why I really try to dive into that. And that's why this, though it might seem small, can have huge repercussions if we continue down that path. Like to me, this is like a flax and cord type of thing where if we, if we start to say that New Jerusalem is not where it is, then that starts to discredit the prophet Joseph. It starts to suggest, as Ben said, that the Lord can do whatever he wants, right? He'll just jumble things around. He's not a God of order. He's God of chaos. And I think that's where, for me, stuff like this matters because it ultimately um, helps me stay true to that which has been said and and within those bounds, you know, that we've talked about with my head and my heart and the bounds the Lord has set. So, yeah, that's why I think this matters. Um, a lot of the signs of the times, a lot of the stuff that's coming is going to be in relation to what happens in Adam on Diamond and Jackson County, Missouri. And if we're not prepared for that, we're going to miss it. And we're, and we're not going to see it happening in real time. And I think that's that's why this matters to me. I love it. You guys took the words out of my mouth, I would say. And maybe I'll piggyback off of some of the stuff that um, President Holland said about, you know, the power of prayer. Um, we should be praying for the spirit of discernment. Uh, for me, some obvious red flags when it comes to discernment are if anything is um disparaging the prophet joseph smith i know immediately that's not from the lord if anything is delaying christ's coming um saying that you know we don't have to worry about that or that's not for another 40 to 80 years and blah blah and not in our lifetime immediately you can know that the, the spirit is not confirming this it's not right um so pray for the spirit of discernment uh, pray for the spirit of prophecy. Uh, pray to know what you should be doing, you and your family, um, to help prepare for the Lord's um, coming. And the Lord's prayer, what is it? Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Um, are we praying for the Lord's kingdom to come? That was something that uh, I felt like I should start doing with my family when we pray as a family to um, pray for the Lord's return, um, pray for, you know, to what what can we do to prepare for Christ to come again? And it's weird at first um, because it's it's not your typical, you know, bless this food that will nourish and strengthen our bodies. You know, the, the, the things that we say mm -hmm. over and over, but it's like really – Lord, I'm I'm praying for you to come again. Um, we are captive to Babylon, and we need you. Um, so, you know, if there was a suggestion I had, it it would be start using prayer uh, to help prepare for the Lord's second coming. Awesome. All right, guys, thanks for your your thoughts and insights. Let's keep. Uh, Keeping our short swords sharp and looking for the day of our, our Savior's return. Um, love you guys. You too. All right. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for joining A Green Hill. If you haven't had a chance to yet, please like the Book of Mormon, follow your Savior Jesus Christ, and share his gospel even upon the rooftops. Until next time.